What I'd like to do here today is demonstrate how to create a table using the uh, APA Publication Manual set of rules from the seventh edition of the APA Publication Manual. You can see that I've got some output from SPSS on the screen. This is actually a screenshot of some, some results from an actual study. I'm not going to go into the details of how to set up the regression analysis that we see here. I'm just going to show you how to create a table using this set of results. Now if we look at the table, we can see that we've got some predictor variables on the left hand side. Specifically we've got two different predictors and the interaction of those two predictors. We've got a Facebook frequency rating that's a seven point scale where high score of seven indicates that the respondent uh, use it, uses Facebook several times a day. Then we have a social comparison scale and that's essentially a 10 point scale. A high score on that scale indicates that the respondent sees him or herself very positively in relation to others. And then we have the interaction of those two. The dependent variable here is positive mood. It's a, it's a depression scale that's uh, commonly used but I reverse coded it so that high scores represent more positive mood. So the details on the, uh, the scales aren't that important here. I just want to show you how to create a table in APA style. So the first thing to do whenever we want to create a scale, of course, is go to the publication manual. And I've got a screenshot of one of the pages of the publication manual here. And this is a, a table for a regression with a confidence interval. And that's what I want. I want a confidence interval. So I'm going to, to some extent, uh, follow the lead here. Specifically, you can see that we've got two different uh, sections here. This is called a decked heading. We have a lower deck and an upper deck. The 95% CI is in the upper deck. And then below that we have lower level and upper level of the 95% CI. So I'll show you how to create that uh, decked level appearance in a Word document go back to Word. What we want to do is we want to count the number of columns and rows. Let's start with the columns. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns, but I'm not going to bother to put the t-test in. Sometimes uh, it's useful to have the t-test results. If you have the unstandardized beta, the standardized beta, and the significance of them, you don't really need the t-test results. So I'm going to skip that and also it saves some space. So seven columns and in terms of the number of rows we need two rows for this section where we have the decked header and then we have uh, one for the Facebook frequency rating, one for the social comparison and one for the interaction. So that's five. It's a seven by five table. So we click insert, uh, insert tab in Word and you can drag the mouse to set it up. Make sure you get the right number. 7 by 5. You could also use the insert table function here. But for this demonstration I'll just uh, use the cursor. So here's our table. What we want to do is we want to input all the different uh, important information from here. I'm actually going to rearrange the confidence intervals so that this section is over here next to the uh, unstandardized uh, beta coefficient. So right after the standard error I'm going to insert my confidence interval. I'm going to scroll down because I've actually already uh, set it up at least in terms of entering the information that I want to have in the, in the table. So all of this information uh, came out of the table and you can see that I rounded off at the second decimal point. Actually let me just uh, delete this comparison table and bring up my newer example so we can compare them back to back. I'll move the title down here for now and so you can see that the numbers match up. I don't have the constant in there. I don't think I need it at least not for this table. So I've got the unstandardized beta, the standard error of the unstandardized beta, I've got the confidence interval area set up, but I'm going to have to merge these two cells and create my decked header. Then over here I've got the standardized beta, 
and I've got the p-value. So let's work with that. First I want to change the, the width of the rows. So I'm going to highlight the table, go to Table Layout, and I'm going to give it some height. Usually uh, 0.4 inch is good, but uh, I don't know, these words over here are a little close together, so I'm going to give it an extra nudge to make it half an inch. We'll see at the end if that's too much. Next, I'll merge these two cells. Now I can go to the uh, to the borders. With the full table highlighted, get rid of all the borders in the table design section over here. It's going to look funny with no borders, but we're going to add them back, at least the ones that we want for APA style. I always do the top and the bottom border with the full table highlighted and now when you move your uh, cursor off of the table you can see that we have borders at the top and bottom. But we need more. Highlight the row with the column headers and put a line underneath that. Then highlight the row with the 95% CI and put a line under that. Now it does look a little bit uh, too wide, so I'm going to bring it back to uh, 0.4 inch, which is more, uh, I think, routine. And the question becomes whether or not you can really see the difference between these uh, words. And at a glance it does look like they're a little bit close, so it's a judgment call, it's up to you. Now I'll put my table back, my table title back up on top. And we have a table now that is in APA format. And that's that's all there is to it. Um, you can add more uh, rows in here if you had more variables. By highlighting a row, you could uh, insert another row underneath insert row below. So if you have, uh, let's say, seven or eight different predictor variables uh, without interactions of them, you would have seven or eight different rows inside the body of the table. But we don't need this one, so I'm going to delete that. And I think I'll just stick with that as my final product. Thanks for watching.